is various head rotations for ultrasonographic diagnosis of bilateral bow hunters syndrome uh... My name is Takeshi Yoshimoto. It is a great honor to be able to speak today. My presentation is show. Hello, doctor. Hello. Yes, yes we are able to see your screen. Okay. Today, I'd like to talk about bilateral bow hunter syndrome and how to diagnose the covered BHS. I'm going to divide my presentation into three parts first, case reports, and second, bilateral bow hunter syndrome, third, covered BHS. I'd like to start by talking about case report. Bow hunter syndrome, also known as rotational vertebral artery occlusion syndrome is a rare yet treatable type of symptomatic vertebral basilar insufficiency resulting from mechanical occlusion or stenosis of the vertebral artery during the head and neck rotation or extension. The symptoms of bull hunter syndrome range from transient vertigo to posterior circulation stroke. A Sorensen first reported it in 1978 in a patient who developed Warrenberg syndrome and additional pyramidal tract application secondary to a posterior circulation infarction during archery practice. Accordingly, the term bow hunter syndrome was introduced uh, compared with vertebral artery cervical spontaneity, which was caused by cervical vertebral bodies or their accessories and usually presents with neck pain. BHS has more complicated causes and seldom present with pain, although they both have the same symptoms as vertebral basilar insufficiency. The underlying pathology is a dynamic stenosis or compression of the VA by abnormal body, bony structures with neck rotation or extension in many cases, such as osteophyte disc herniation, cervical spondylitis, tendinous bands, or tumors. Imaging approaches such as Doppler sonography, computed and angiography, as well as MRI imaging and angiography are widely used in the diagnosis and evaluation of this syndrome. The and uh, clinical question, the incidence of BHS remains unclear because of the limited number of case reports and the case series and the lack of interest in BHS in their clinical practice. Another problem seems to be right in the fact that most studies have reported, reported only the diagnosis and outcomes of BHS, not how BHS can be diagnosed or whether unilateral or bilateral BHS was missed in specific cases. Uh, case report. A 30-year-old woman presented with repeated transient symptoms, including dizziness, vomiting, and hemiplegia within two months. She was allowed without fever, rash, or headache on admission and had no history of neck trauma vascular or connective tissue diseases, and no family history of sim similar symptoms. Uh, Diffusion-weighted MRI shows multiple infarctions uh, in the right cerebrum, right side of the pons and the left cerebral cross. A conventional carotid uh, duplex uh, ultrasonography performed in the neutral position showed no evidence of atherosclerotic changes or abnormal blood flow patterns in the left vertebral arteries. However, EDV in the left vertebral artery was irregular when the head was rotated rightward. In the right vertebral artery, no abnormal blood flow pattern was found when the head was rotated leftward. However, rotating the head leftward in the rototetic position significantly decreased EDV. 
These ultrasonographic findings led to a suspected diagnosis of a bilateral ro rotational vertebral artery occlusion, or so-called bow hunter's syndrome. On computed tomography angiography, and the vertebra was shown to compress the left vertebral artery at the entry to the second intervertebral foramen with the head rotated rightward, causing a cessation of blood flow. The flexure of the first bend at V3 was sharp, which was might have caused compression of the VA upon neck rotation. DSA of the left vertebral artery shows an absence of atherosclerotic change of abnormal blood flow pattern in the neutral head position, but occlusion at V2, V3 reveals when the head is rotated 55 angle rightward. VA was disrupted at the V2, V3 transition and was found again via anastomosis of the anterior meningeal artery and muscle branches. And occlusion of V2, V3 segments of the right vertebral artery with the head rotated 50 left world in the rotated position only. As a rata uh, head position made the patient uncomfortable, the neck was straightened and the head rotated further left to 60 angle, canceling the occlusion of right vertebral artery. Uh, there were no findings of arterial dissection. These findings practically led to a definitive diagnosis of bilateral BHS in which vascular intimal injuries caused by repeated vertebral artery compression seem to have promoted in situ thrombolysis, eventually resulting in artery to artery embolism. Uh, the patient was advised to avoid the specific angle of head rotation described and discharge with low dose aspirin treatment. After a five month follow up period, MRI showed a symptomatic recurrent cerebral infarction in the left occipital lobe. The patient, therefore, underwent a posterior spinal fusion at C1C2 to prevent further recurrence. The patient has not experienced any subsequent recurrence of symptoms for five months and had not needed anti thrombotic drug administration. Just at all reported our literature review of BHS, 12% uh, 12, 12 of BHS was bilateral, three of which had a region at C1, C2, in accordance with this case. The etiology includes juvenile rheumatoid arthritis, degenerative joints, and hospitalization of atlas vertebrae. In the present case, However, no obvious etiological factors were found. This case signifies the importance of ultrasonography of the bilateral VAs at various angles of head rotation in early onset cerebral infarction in patients without a history of comorbidities of cerebral vascular risk factors. It is a critical to determine whether BHS is unilateral or bilateral to apply appropriate treatment strategies including the surgeon. We have termed this condition covered BHS as blood flow is only affected at a specific angle of rotation objectively, not subjectively. This case signifies the importance of ultrasonography of the bilateral VAs at various angles. Discussion conservative treatment is a first line intervention of OBHS and can reportedly prevent recurrence. Still, BHS occasionally requires of surgical treatment, treatment when accompanied by repeated severe symptoms. Among cases in which surgery was the primary treatment approach, 90 60% of the patients had favorable outcomes, whereas among cases treated by a conservative approach, only 37% of the patient had a favorable outcome. The primary surgical procedure, uh, VA decompression and posterior c one shih fusion, is of which can be selected in patients with hemodynamic abnormalities caused by unilateral BHS. 
In patients with bilateral BHS, however, bilateral decompression is not recommended because of its high invasiveness. Instead, posterior Shivan Shitsu fusion should be selected despite its postoperative inconvenience. Also, Saito proposed a well known ultrasonographic diagnostic algorithm with which to localize Fouillet occlusion. This algorithm is not sufficient for identifying covered VHS. Disappearance of the EBD, uh, sorry, disappearance of the EDV due to cervical rotation reportedly suggests a diagnosis of VHS, which should not be missed in patients with posterior circulation stroke of undetermined source. Therefore, we created a new algorithm to identify covered VHS by adding head movement to the previous algorithm. VHS is not limited to one side, evaluation of the other side is mandatory. Conclusion, patient with posterior circulation stroke should undergo duplex ultrasonography of the bilateral vertebral arteries at various head rotation angles. Proper identification of covered BHS unilaterally or bilaterally is clinically significant with respect to determining the most appropriate treatment. We should be careful to avoid missing covered BHS. Thank you. That's all.